Hardware hipsters, it's Prof G. Are you prepared to become dashboard dynamos controlling your Raspberry Pi Pico W over the internet from an easy to create web dashboard? Well, if so, you're in the right place because in this lesson, we're going to learn to work with multiple controls and feeds. We're gonna build on the on off toggle that we used in our prior lesson to turn a NeoPixel strip on and off. We'll add a color picker so that we can change the NeoPixel strips color. We'll add buttons that can play sounds and we'll use a slider to move a servo motor. If that sounds good to you, then let's learn big. Now, just a quick reminder for anyone who's new here. In our prior lesson, we set up a free Adafruit IO account and we wrote preliminary code to connect to Adafruit IO and turn a NeoPixel strip on and off. I'm gonna assume everyone's already done this and we'll begin by modifying code that we wrote in the last lesson. If you haven't done the prior lesson, find it in one of our playlists and when you're done, come back here. For everyone else, open your browser Head to io.adafruit.com, make sure you're logged in, and click on the dashboard tab and pull up the remote control dashboard that we created in the last lesson. Let's start by adding a color picker. To do that, click the gear icon in the upper right, and from the menu that appears, select Create New Block. Find and click the color picker block, and you're asked to select a feed or create one. We're gonna create a separate feed for our color picker. If we use the same feed as the feed for our on off button, Adafruit IO would reset the toggle switch to off each time we selected a new color, and we don't wanna do that. But creating a separate feed for our color picker will prevent this, and it will treat the controls as separate. So to create a new feed, just click in the field that says enter new feed name. We'll call ours color underscore feed, all lowercase, all one word, and press return. And we see that new feed name now appears in our list of feeds. Click the checkbox next to the color feed and click next step. And that'll attach the new color feed to our color picker control. Let's add a block title, NeoPixel strip color is a good title for this block. And then we can click on create block. And since we've never used this before, we don't see any color in the block, but it's now on our dashboard. Now let's head over to our CircuitPython program and add code to receive messages from the color picker. Now I saved the file at the end of the last lecture as MQTT with Adafruit IO and Pico W in my CircuitPython school folder. So I've pulled that up and now I'm gonna save that as code.py to my CircuitPy volume. That puts that file on my Pico W. And I'll change my comment to MQTT with color picker, Adafruit IO, and I'll make my font bigger so it's easier to see. Now in this block of code where I work on my NeoPixel strip, I'm gonna create a variable that I'm gonna call strip underscore color, and I'm gonna set that equal to all caps red, this color that I created up here, and that's gonna be a global value to hold the current color. When we use the color picker to change the color, we're gonna update strip underscore color. Then we'll create another variable like this one here that contains the string where we're gonna find our new feed, the color feed. So I'll just highlight this line, copy it, paste it below, and on this new line I paste it in, I'm gonna change the name to color underscore feed, and this feed string here will be slash feeds slash color underscore feed. That's the name that I gave the feed in Adafruit IO. Now, once I've set up this feed string, I wanna use it to subscribe to that feed. So down here in my connected function, below where I say client.subscribe to strip on off feed, I'm gonna say client.subscribe, and in between parentheses, I'll pass in color underscore feed. So we've just modified our code to subscribe to the dashboard's new feed. So now we've got this set up, we should be getting messages from that new feed, the color feed, as well as our strip on off feed. Now let's modify our message function here so that we can respond to messages coming from our new color feed. First, what I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna modify our strip color in here and update that with the newly selected color, is I wanna specify that our strip underscore color variable that I created above is a global variable. So I'll just put in global strip underscore color. If I didn't add this global line, then my code would have ignored the earlier strip color value that I created. And when I refer to strip color inside this function, it would think that that was a new variable local to this function, and that would get wiped out each time the function's done running. If that happened, we wouldn't be able to keep track of the strip color each time we had a new message come in. Now, previously we didn't look at the messages feed because we only subscribed to one feed. So we knew all messages were coming in from the strip on off feed, but now we've got more than one feed. So whenever the dashboard publishes a message, if we've subscribed to the feed of that message, then this function is gonna be called and we get the feed name and the topic variable up here, as well as the message that's sent by that feed. So we need to check the topic value to see which feed the message comes from. And then we can respond to the message we expect from that feed. So before we check to see if we have an on or off message, let's add a line that says if topic, 
double equals strip underscore on underscore off underscore feed colon, and I'll highlight the five lines below, and I'll indent them one level by pressing the tab key, and these lines will now only execute if we get a message from strip on off feed. Now I'm going to make a change in how I handle on off. Instead of changing color from red to black, I'm going to set the brightness to full brightness or zero brightness. So in this if message double equals on block, I'm going to add a line down below that says strip dot brightness equals 1.0. And in the else block below that, I'll add a line that says strip dot brightness equals 0.0. That turns the strip off. And since I might change my color using the color picker, I don't want to fill the strip with red each time I turn it on. Instead, I want to use strip underscore color, my global variable. Now this is going to be red when the code first runs, but we'll update this variable in just a bit so that it changes each time we select a new color from the color picker. So up here, I'm going to write a comment that says on slash off toggled. And now that I'm turning the strip off using brightness, I no longer need this line where I fill a strip with the color black, so I'll highlight and delete this. Now below this, I'm going to outdent so that I'm at the same indentation level as the if topic line above. And here I'm going to enter an L if statement, checking to see if topic double equals color underscore feed colon. If that happens, a message was sent from the color picker, the color picker was used. Now just as an extra safety check to make sure that I'm getting a color, I'm going to write if message bracket zero bracket double equals and then the string so between double quotes the number sign or hashtag make sure this line has a colon after it now we don't absolutely need this line but it's sort of a safety check for us colors are sent from the color picker in hex format that's base 16 format and the first character in that value the color picker sends is always a number sign the number sign means base 16. so by checking to see that a number sign is in here we just double check to make sure that we got a color value which we should now this value we're receiving is going to be a bit of a problem. It's a string and a base 16 number, a hex value. So we're going to convert it to a number, and the easiest thing to do is to convert the hex inside the string to a base 10 decimal value. And once we do that, we can change our color using the value that we get. And here's how we do that. We'll first remove the number sign from the first character in the string in the message. We're going to do that by saying message equals message square bracket one colon close square bracket. Now characters in a string are zero indexed. So zero is the first character, one is the second character. And this notation says start with the second character, that's at index one, and the colon with nothing after it says go to the rest of the string. So again, that just removes number from the string, it sets message equal to the character at index one, which is the second character, all the way through to the end. Now we can use a hex value as a color. The problem is we don't have a hex value here, we have a string, and there's no easy way to convert a hex value in a string to a hex number. But we can convert a hex value in a string to a base 10 integer using just a single line of Python code. So we'll do that here. We're going to set strip underscore color, our global value that holds the current color, equal to int parentheses, message comma 16, close parentheses. So this takes the string in message, states that it's a base 16 value, and it converts it to an integer, which is a base 10 value. Then all we need to do is say strip dot fill and in parentheses pass in strip underscore color. So this works great. Again, we verify we've got a hex value, we strip out the number sign, we convert the remaining base 16 value that's in a string to a base 10 integer, and assign that to strip underscore color and use that value to fill in the strip. So this should work. Let's open the serial console and click save and we connect to Wi-Fi. We connect to Adafruit IO. So let's head over to our web dashboard. And if we toggle on, the default color is red. So we see the strip in red. But now let's click the color picker so we can select a color range on the right hand side. So I'll select blue and then I'm going to click and drag on the square in the center here and select this blue and click save. And look at that, we're blue. Notice the hex value shows down below. I'll click the color picker again and use the slider on the right. Let's select green this time, click save and we're green. Now if I click off and then on again, we can see we're still green. But I can also click off and then change the color to say pink. Click save, and then if I turn the strip on, the strip is in pink. Nice! Color picker working. Let's head back over to Moo. And by the way, we can see in the console the topics, which are feeds, are printing out for each message. And we also see the messages that are sent as well. On or off each time we click the toggle. And we see a hex value each time we change the color. So this is great. I'll close the serial console. And I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school folder as MQTT color picker. Then I'll close this and reopen code.py on my CircuitPy volume. 
Now we're gonna add buttons on our dashboard to play sounds on our Pico W. But in order for this to work, we need sounds. You can use any MP3 sounds that'll fit on your board, but I've already got some that you can use if you'd like. If you want to, you can open a browser, head to the open Google Drive at bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, all lowercase, find the folder named sounds. I'm gonna double click this and open this folder, and I'm gonna highlight both encouragement1.mp3, not .wave, those will be too big, and encouragement2.mp3. On the Mac, you can option click to select multiple items at once. Then I'm gonna right click and select download, and I'll download these items to my computer. Now I'm gonna put both of these files in a folder named sounds, all lowercase, and I'm gonna drag the sounds folder onto my Pico. If you don't have enough room on your Pico, you can delete any files you don't need, like any existing old, sound folders that are on there. So your Pico should look like this with a sounds folder with two mp3 files, encouragement one and encouragement two inside of it. Now let's head back to Adafruit IO's dashboard and add buttons to play these sounds. Now we already know how to add new elements to our dashboard. Just click the gear icon in the upper right hand corner and click create new block. Find and select the block that's called momentary button. That's just a push button. That'll bring up this box that says connect to a feed and we're gonna enter a new feed down below in this box. We'll say sounds underscore feed, we'll press return. Then you can click the checkbox next to that new feed and click next step. Let's add button text. We'll call this code or code not. And for press value, I'm gonna enter the name of the file that I wanna play. And it's okay to go and copy it right from your desktop if you'd like. I wanna play encouragement one here. I'll paste it in, that just ensures I have no spelling errors. So the full name and extension should be in here, encouragement1.mp3. So when I press this button, the message encouragement1.mp3 is gonna be sent over the feed. And when I release the button, a zero is gonna be sent over the feed. I'm gonna ignore the release value. I'm not gonna do anything when the button is released, but we need to have something in here. Then I'll click create block. Now I wanna play another sound, so I'm gonna click on the gear icon and click create new block, and I'm gonna click on momentary button again. This time I don't need to create a new feed, I'm just gonna reuse my sounds underscore feed, so click the checkbox next to that and click next step. The button text for this one is gonna be code monster, and I'm gonna paste in the same sound name as before, but I know instead of it being called encouragement one, this one should be encouragement2.mp3. So I'll change that. Again, you need to spell the name in here exactly as any sounds in your sounds folder. Then I'll click on create block, and the buttons are at the bottom of the screen. I'd like to move them around. So I'm gonna click on the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. I'll click on edit layout. And first, I can't see everything in this button, but if I click in the lower right hand corner, hold down the mouse button and drag, I can stretch my button out. Then I can move my cursor right to the edge of this button rectangle and drag it up. And again, the behavior for the layout is a little quirky. If you drag over an existing item, that item might be pushed to the bottom. So that's what happened with our color picker. It's still there. Just push to the bottom. We'll get that in just a bit. And I'll drag the code monster button up below code or code not. And then if I scroll down below, I can find my color picker and I can click and drag that above. And there's not an easy way to align the code monster button at the center of the code or code not button. So I'm just going to stretch out code monster so it's the same size as the button above it. Then with this done, I can click on save layout and I'm all set up. So let's head back to Moo and code this up. So I'm just gonna change the comment up here to read color picker and sound. And then I'm gonna import the MP3 audio files that we need to playback audio and MP3. And we've had lessons on MP3 playback, so I'm not gonna go through this code in detail. If you've gone through the entire course, you should be familiar with the code we're about to write. But if you need to go back and check that out, the playlist has lessons on MP3 audio playback. So let's get those libraries we need. We'll say from audio PWMIO, import PWM audio out as audio out. Make sure you get the capitalizations right in this. And from audio MP3, import MP3 decoder. Also get the caps right there too. Then we'll set up our speaker. We'll call it audio and set that equal to audio out, capital A, capital O. And between parens, we'll pass in the pin that the tip of the audio plug is attached to. For me, that's board.gp16. Then we'll create a path variable to hold the name of the folder that contains our sound files by saying path equals in between double quotes, my mp3 files are in a folder called sounds with a lowercase and make sure you put a slash at the end. Then when we work with mp3 files, we always need to create an mp3 decoder. Even if we don't play it right away, we need to read in one of the files for creating that decoder. So we'll set up our mp3 decoder and first we'll declare a variable named file name and we'll set that equal to encouragement1.mp3. It can be any of the files that are on our board. Then we'll create a variable mp3 underscore file and we'll set that equal to open and in parentheses we're gonna pass in path, our folder, plus file name, the file name above this, comma, and then the string between double quotes, 
rb in lowercase. That'll just read in the binary values for that file. Make sure you got your closing parenthesis. And then on the next line, we'll create our decoder. We'll call it decoder, and we'll set that equal to mp3 decoder, passing in mp3 underscore file, the variable above this that contains the binary data that we just read in. And next we'll create a function to play back the mp3 file. And this is gonna be a little bit different. It's actually gonna be smaller than the previous play mp3 function that we've used. So first we define it with def, we'll call it play underscore mp3. We're gonna pass in file name colon, and then indented in the line below, we'll say decoder.file equals open between parentheses path plus file name comma, and in double quotes rb, close parens. Then to play back the audio, we just say audio.play, and in between parentheses, we put in decoder. Now here's where we're gonna stop. In the past, we've said while audio.playing colon, and below this, either we say pass to hold on until we're done playing the audio file, or we'll call another function within this while loop if we want another function to run while the sound is playing, but then to stop when the sound is done playing. We've done this, for example, when we've pulsed lights only when a sound is playing. But here, this is gonna to continue to play the file, but we're gonna fall through and we're gonna to continue to accept any additional updates, meaning incoming messages that might come in from the main loop. So this will let us do things like turn on or turn off the NeoPixel lights while the sound is playing. Cool. So we don't need while audio.playing in here, we just need two lines inside of this function, and that's it. Now before we write the code to play sound, let's make sure that we're gonna receive messages from that sounds feed that we created. So I'm gonna add a value down here. We'll create a sound feed. I'm just gonna copy my color feed and place it down below, and I'm gonna replace color underscore feed with sound underscore feed in the beginning as the variable name and also within the string. And now we also wanna make sure that we subscribe to that feed. So as the last line in the connected function, we wanna say client.subscribe and in between parens, pass in our sounds underscore feed. Again, really important to make sure that you've got the spelling correct here. So notice that I named my feed sounds plural. So you wanna make sure that you use that in any strings. If I spelled my feed wrong, then I wouldn't be reading in any messages from that feed. Then down inside the message function, we want to add another condition to our if statement to check to see if we get anything from our sounds feed. So below all the code from the elif topic double equals color underscore feed, I'm going to outdent so that I'm equal with the if elif for both of my topic checks. And I'll just say elif topic double equals sound underscore feed colon. If that happens, the button has been pressed to play one of the sounds. And then indented below this, I'll say if message exclamation point equals, which means not equals the string zero colon. Now remember those buttons send a zero when you release the button and we don't wanna to respond to any button release messages. So we're just gonna ignore those. So if the message is not equal to zero, then we wanna play that message. Indented below this, we'll just say play underscore mp3. Between parentheses, we'll pass in message, and that's it. We can open the serial console, click on save. It looks like we're connecting to Wi-Fi. We've got no errors. We've connected to Adafruit IO. Let's head to our console. Click code or code not. Code or code not. There is no try. Code monster. Code monster. There's some Yoda encouragement. Let's turn on our light strip. We'll set a color. Always make sure you click on the middle square. Click on save. Light's still lighting up in blue. If you click the button while another sound is playing, you'll hear one sound overwrite the other. Code or a code monster you have become. Code or so code all this is looking good. You can try no out try. some of these options, but we've got code sound playing, a color not. picker, and no our try. toggle on a off for the light strip. Nice. Now notice in the serial console, we wrote our code to print out the topics, which are the feeds and the messages that are sent. So we can see the name of the MP3 files we're playing, as well as the zeros that are coming through. Remember the dashboard sends a zero and we release the button, we're ignoring those. We've still got our on off toggles. We've got our color hex values. So this is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my CircuitPython school folder. I'll call this MQTT color picker sound. Then I'll close this up and I'll open code.py on my CircuitPy volume. Let's finish this up by adding one more dashboard control, a slider, and we'll use this to control a servo. So let's head back to our Adafruit IO dashboard in our browser. We'll click the gear and click create new block. This time we wanna select slider. We're gonna enter a new feed down below called servo underscore feed, press return, then click on the box next to servo feed and click next step. I'll give this a block title of servo angle. I'll keep the slider min value as zero, but I'll set the slider max value to 180. That's because standard servos swing from a zero to 180 degree arc. I'm gonna change the slider step size to one so that I can change the slider values one degree at a time. Sometimes these are a little rough to change. You might have to highlight everything and then type over top of it. You can leave the slider label empty, but I'm gonna get fancy like, and I'm gonna hold down shift option eight. That types the degree symbol on the Mac. And I've not seen decimal places do anything. That's probably because I'm not incrementing by decimal values in here, but I'm gonna make this zero 
anyway, again, this is sort of tough to change. You might need to highlight it and then just type a zero over top of it. There are also up and down stepper values on the right hand side. Then click create block and we see the servo angle slider is created down below. Now, if I want to move this, I can click the gear and click edit layout. I'll click the top edge and drag the servo angle so that it's underneath the two buttons. My color picker moved, so I'm going to move that back as well. Then click save layout. And now let's add some code to make this work. I'll change my comment so it now says color picker sound and servo. And again, if you're new here, you need a refresher. We covered servos in depth in an earlier lesson, which you can find in the playlist if you want to go back and check that out. Now we'll start out by importing PWMIO plus from Adafruit underscore motor, we'll import servo. Now I'm going to set up my servo on GP14, so I'll declare a PWM variable, setting that equal to PWMIO dot PWM out with capital P W M and O. And then between parentheses, I'll say board dot GP 14, cause that's where my signal pin is attached to comma frequency equals 50. Make sure you close your parentheses. Then under here, I'll set up my servo. I'm going to call that servo underscore one, setting that equal to servo dot capital S servo, open and close parens. I'll pass in the PWM object that I created above comma, and I'll set min underscore pulse to 650 and max underscore pulse to 2250. Now you can change the shrinking min underscore pulse if you need to lower your zero angle and increase your max pulse if you need to push your 180 degree angle out. Again, I discussed what all this is about in our lesson on servos. Then we'll start out with servo underscore one dot angle, setting that equal to zero. Then down below, let's set up our feed. So I'm just going to copy my sound feed and paste a copy down below. And I'm going to change the name to servo underscore feed. And I'll also paste servo underscore feed into the string. And then down below in our connected function, I'll say at the end client dot subscribe. And in between parentheses, I'll pass in servo underscore feed. Then down in our message function, remember this is where we respond to messages. We need to add another L if for the topic of servo feed. Make sure that you outdent so that this is even with the indent level of the other if L if statements for topics. And I'll say L if topic double equals servo underscore feed. If this happens, the slider's been moved. And to make this move, it's super easy. So indented below this, I'm just going to say servo underscore one dot angle equals int, and in between parentheses, message. Remember, message is a string, so I've got to convert it to an int, but that's it. Let's open the serial monitor, click on save. Looks like we're connecting to the internet and Adafruit IO, so let's head over to the dashboard. Let's slide that slider, and oh, look at the servo move. Slide it again, look at that move. Your servo is swerving. We can still change colors over here with our color picker. We can play sounds and move the servos while the sounds are playing. Circuit Pythonista, that is some masterful MQTT work. A code monster you have become. Skilled you are. You are a code monster. You are skilled. Now, there are two short things that I'd like to show you before we finish this lesson. First, the servo is sweeping in the opposite direction of the slider. Unfortunately, at this point, you can't set the slider value to swing from a high number to a low number, but we can move the servo in the same direction as the slider. What we'll simply do is we'll subtract 180 from the message angle that's set. What that does is it just changes the direction so that whenever the servo angle is zero, we're really going to be at 180. And whenever we're at 180, we're really going to be at zero. Simply moving the servo in the opposite direction. And while we're here, why don't I calibrate my servo? Your calibration values are different. I experimented with different values earlier. I think min pulse equals 650 and max pulse equals 2400 is a better swing range. That'll look like it's a 0 to 180 arc. And now let's open the serial console, save. We don't have any errors, so we'll head over to our dashboard. And I suppose I should have set my start angle as 180 now instead of 0. But if I move the slider over to 89, I'm right in the middle. Now if I go to zero, look at that, the servo goes to the left. If I move it over to 180, the servo moves to the right. So it's now moving in the exact direction as the slider. Nice, mission accomplished. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to do. If I unplug my Pico and I plug it back in, I'd like to get the latest settings from the dashboard and use those settings to move my servo, to set my colors, and to turn my strip on or off. And it is possible to do that, but we're not doing that right now. Watch what happens when I unplug my Pico and plug it back in. The default code has the strip lights off and the servo moving to the zero degree position, but my dashboard has the strip on, it's got this color yellow, and it's got the servo angle at 129. Well, let me show you how we can grab the latest values from our dashboard and use those in our code to change the settings in the hardware that's connected to our Pico. So we'll head over to Moo, 
And when we look at our feeds, when I turn on my Pico, I want to get the last value that was sent to strip on off feed. That's that on off toggle button. I also want to get the color feed. That'll be the value from the color picker. And I want to get the value of the servo feed. So I want to get the servo angle. I don't care about the sounds because I only want to play sound at the moment that the sound button is pressed. But let me show you how we can get the latest value from these three other feeds. Let's scroll down just before the while true loop. So after we call mqttclient.connect, we've connected to our broker. Remember that's Adafruit IO. And then we're gonna tell the dashboard to send the latest settings from these feeds. And technically this comes from Adafruit IO. It doesn't come from the dashboard, but for our program, the only way that we publish is through our dashboard. So you can consider them to be the same thing. So we're gonna say mqtt underscore client dot publish. Up until now, we've only subscribed to feeds, but now we're going to publish. And in between parentheses, we're going to say the name of the feed that we want to connect to. So I'll start off with strip underscore on underscore off underscore feed. And to tell Adafruit IO to give us the last value that was published to this feed, we're going to add a string. So plus double quotes slash GET in lowercase letters to the feed name. Close double quotes, comma, followed by an empty string. So two double quotes in a row, followed by a closing parenthesis. So what we're doing here is we're publishing a message to the feed name, but we're appending slash get to that feed name. It doesn't matter what we send. This is just going to tell Adafruit IO to send the latest value that was set on this feed. So I'll copy this line. I'll paste it two times below. Then I'm going to change the second feed to color underscore feed and this third one to servo underscore feed. That's it. So now when I save my code and I connect to the server, next we're going to publish these three messages and we should get back three messages that include the last values that were set on these three separate feeds. Those should be the settings in the dashboard for that strip on off toggle, the color picker, and the servo angle. When we receive each of those messages each time, our message function is gonna run and it should update our hardware. So I'll put a reminder comment in here, publishing to a feed with a string slash get added to the feed name will send the latest values from that feed. For us, that was the latest settings that were published by our Adafruit IO dashboard. And you know what, before I save this, I'm gonna scroll up and right when I set up my servo, I'm gonna set its initial angle to 180 instead of zero, but this is gonna matter less because we're gonna get the current value of the angle from the slider. So let's click on the save button. We're gonna connect to Wi-Fi. The servo angle initially moves to 180 and we have our lights off. It'll take a second to publish those three messages and get three messages back. But look at that, the Pico's been updated. We can see our hardware is set to the values that we've got in our dashboard. The lights are on, they're in yellow, and our servo angle is 129 degrees. Outstanding. Now my dashboard continues to control my Pico, but now I'm gonna unplug my Pico. And with the Pico unplugged, I'll change some settings. I'll set the color to magenta. I'll turn the light strip off. I'll set the servo angle to 180. Then I'll plug it back in. And we should see that after the Pico starts, it publishes the get message to Adafruit IO, and it'll get the latest setting for the color, the light strip toggle, and the servo angle. And there it is. Now we turn the light strip off, but when we turn it on, it should be magenta, and it is. So Pythonista, this is pretty sophisticated work. You've got a web dashboard, you're sending commands over MQTT, they're being received by the subscribing circuit Python program. When the code starts, you also publish a request to the server to get the latest command so you can update the hardware. Let's make sure we save this great work to our CircuitPython school folder. We'll call this MQTT dashboard. Then I'll close it up and I'll open code.py back on my CircuitPy volume. Feel good about those mad MQTT skills, there's more coming including robot building, continue to hack.